All right, so we are live. This over here so I can see the chat. All right, so there's my chat. Actually, I'm gonna switch it over here. <clears throat> Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. I test out the audio, but all right, there we go. Oops, <laughs> I messed everything up here. Okay. <laughs> okay, so there's that. Hi, Ronnie. I'm assuming it's Ronnie. How do I get this back? Okay. Oh, here we go. <laughs> hey, Allison. Hey, Julia. Hey, Le Leanne. Is that how you would say that? Leanne? That's a pretty name. All right, guys. Thanks for joining. First, I'm going to, my husband's printer was not working when I got here. I was just thinking as I was setting this up, look at right behind me. We've got like golfing man right there. We've got like over here, uh, bachelors of theology. We've got fish on the wall. And then over there, which you can't see, oh, husband's guitar, leather chair. And then over there, which you can't see is the deer on the wall. So I was just thinking as I'm looking at all of this masculine stuff in the background that I need like a feminine backdrop. <laughs> I need to like put a green screen and then put like flowers for the background or something, something more feminine. This is a show for a podcast for women. And we've got like all this masculine stuff. So I just thought that was funny. Oh, and you know, the plaid couch that people make fun of all the time, but hey, it's a comfy couch. I like it. So we, we make use of it. So, all right. Hi, Amber. Hey, Rita. So anyways, into the topic tonight, I wanted to read the comment that someone left. Now, if you guys, if you, okay, I call you guys, I'm not going to call you girls. I just, just, that's just a Northern thing. We call everyone guys. So if you guys want to check out, if you're not a part of my gently led sisters group on Facebook, oftentimes I'll ask for topic suggestions. And this was hey Beth. And this was one of the topic suggestions that I do this making your home a haven. And this is the comment, the whole comment that she left. And she said, my suggestion is to do a topic on making the home a haven for us and our family. And what I mean is giving advice about keeping the home clean. There you go, Ronnie. You can uh, give us advice in that area. Keeping the home clean, working hard around the house, maybe some tips on having a system to clean and maintain the home, creating a pleasant atmosphere at home for our husband and kids, planning and being prepared for our family's needs, how to motivate ourselves to do the chores that need to be done, even if we don't feel like it how to find time to take care of ourselves and our hobbies in the midst of running around all day, meeting everyone's needs. We can't pour from an empty cup, which I agree. And she said, I know many women who are struggling to balance all these different aspects of running a home. It would be good to have some encouragement and wisdom based on the Bible in these areas. So hi, Deidre and Emily. See some new faces in the chat. Thanks for joining you guys. So we're going to go over. I started doing this and realized that it was going to take a lot longer than one show. So I'm, I'm breaking it up. I'm going to do the first part of her comment. And then next week, try to do the second part. And then I believe the week after that is the week that I'm having Miss Chanello on. It might be the week after that. But I'm also hoping to have a girl named um, Faith on to talk about being single. And I know I have some single ladies that watch. So I'm hoping that she would be an encouragement to you. She's faithfully serving God in her church. Her dad is a pastor. And I think she would have a really interesting testimony that a lot of women would get, um, they would enjoy. So, hey, Erin, thanks for joining the live. So let's get right into it. Okay, so this is making our home a haven part one. And we all know that as the queen bee of our home, we are in charge of the atmosphere. I've learned through experience that I set the tone in my home. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. And I'm sure you guys have discovered that as well. 
We want our homes to be havens. We don't want our children fleeing as soon as they turn 18 because it was such a nightmare living in our home. And believe me, I've seen that. Um, I've been in the ministry a long time. I've seen kids that could not wait to escape. And it's the, within just a month or two of turning 18, they were gone. Um, I've seen kids flee because their parents were over the top, controlling, and made the home a miserable place where everyone had to walk around on eggshells. I've seen kids flee because their home was a pigsty. Um, it was a miserable place to live because there was garbage everywhere. It smelled, there were bugs, etc. There are different things we can do to make our home a haven. And I want to go over them today. So we're going to talk about cleaning first. But when I was at my best friend's house, uh, her husband likes to watch the show Hoarders. <clears throat> and there was one on, and I think it traumatized my kids. So I'm kind of glad we watched it. But there was one on, and I think I talked about it a little while ago, but uh, this man was just, his home was infested with roaches. And I think I did bring this up already, but that's okay. It, you can tell it made an impact on me because I hate roaches. Top 10 things I hate. Roaches are probably number one. I think out of this entire world, roaches or bed bugs would be up there. Onions would be like four or five, maybe but roaches would take the number one spot. So that's why I'm so traumatized. And he literally was sleeping on a bed where there are thousands and thousands of roaches. And I cannot imagine living in the house. I can't imagine having children in that house. Roaches are very disgusting because they carry feces every they They walk through disgusting, rotting things, and then they carry it on their feet and they go, you know, they're everywhere over food, over your counters, over your floor. And it's just super unsanitary. So if you have a bug problem, please try to get rid of that. There are some natural things you can do, but if you can afford it, please get an exterminator <laughs> to take care of that problem for you because no one wants to live like that. So, but when it comes to cleaning, um, let's just talk about the basics of just keeping the house picked up, clutter free, you know, clean. And we'll also go over the difference. There is a difference between a clean house, um, and when I say clean, I don't mean perfect. I mean that it's not disgusting. It's not dirty. And there are, you know, dirty houses where you haven't washed the toilets in three weeks and, you know, you haven't scrubbed the floors in three months and there's just poop tracked in from animals outside and dirt everywhere and stuff smeared on the walls. That's a dirty house. So there is quite a big difference between the two spectrums, but Something I've done my whole, you know, 21 years of being married. Now I, I have to put this disclaimer out there. I was raised in a very clean home. And I do know that part of our habits stem from the way that we were raised. And my mom was the type of mom that would give us a list of chores. And when she came back, she would see the piece of lint on the floor that we forgot. So she was super picky, <laughs> but she taught me how to clean. She taught me the process for cleaning bathrooms, what exactly we need to do. She was very picky about it. She taught me the process for even when it came to the cycle of the living room, you dust first, you don't want to vacuum and then dust, you know, so she was even picky about the order of things. It's like you do the windows first, you dust first, um, you know, pick up the clutter. And then the last, very last thing that you do would be vacuum, you know, and so that's why she would spot a piece of lint on the floor if she came home and Almost everything would be perfect except for the piece of lint. So she was kind of a little obsessive about cleaning. <laughs> and so I probably, I am not that far because as a kid, it kind of stressed me up growing up. So I didn't want to be like that far to the right. So I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. I like a clean home, but I'm not going to be panicking and, you know, screaming at the kids or whatever. And I've had, you know, I've been grouchy before, but I try to nip that in the butt. So one thing that I've done is I've had a loose schedule when it comes to cleaning. I try to clean up during the day. I try not to let it pile up. Now with little kids, this is going to be hard. And that's why with little kids, I always had two times that I would pretty much clean. And then the rest of the time, you know, I would um, just kind of let it go until that time. Now I would unless the kids help with cleaning up, clean up, clean up everybody everywhere. <laughs> you know, we would do little songs like that. And I would have the kids pick up all their toys. The big thing was the big toys. 
And then um, I would put them down for their naps. And during their naps, that's when I would focus on getting the dishes cleaned and put away, cleaning bathrooms if I needed to at that time, mopping the floor, um, vacuuming. Vacuuming, I wouldn't really do when they were sleeping to wake them up, but that is one of the things I would do right when they woke up, would be vacuuming. So I would get everything else done and then I would do that. I agree, Julia. I I can't stand walking on, even, even when I have, and most of the time, my kids keep the house pretty clean for uh, the majority of the time now, but I still have to wear flip-flops because it drives me nuts getting anything on my bare feet. Is anyone else like that? I can't stand having, I'm pretty much barefoot with flip-flops on the entire day, unless I go somewhere and I put on sandals or shoes or whatever. But even in my house, I wear flip-flops because I can't stand having stuff on the bottom of my feet. So I would have a two time pickup or cleanup. I would do it when they were down for their naps. That's when I would get the majority of my cleaning done for the day. And then when they would get up from their naps, you know, they'd play and the toys would come out again. So then after they went to bed at night and when my kids were real little, we put them to bed at seven, seven thirty. So when my kids went to bed at night, then I went through again and I had it clean. So when I woke up in the morning, I know I've been through that before with all of you. Um, and there are different, um, there are different things that you can, different programs that you can do. Um, Motivated Moms has one that I followed for years before all my kids started cleaning. There's Fly Lady, there's, you know, Clean With Me podcast <laughs> that you can watch and get tips from. There's lots of resources out there that you can definitely get involved in. Maria is watching and she says she will, it's not allowing her to comment. So hi, Maria. Everyone say hi, Maria. She wants to say hi to all the ladies, but I'm wondering sometimes for some reason or another, people get blocked. And I really, because one of the lady um, girls, Kaylin Gardner, that tried commenting for a long time, I figured out she was blocked from like a long time ago. So sometimes that accidentally happens. Um, I can check and make sure that you're not blocked, Maria. I don't know why you would be, but... But yes, Maria's watching and she wanted to say hi to all of you. So there, <laughs> Maria said hi to everyone. And I noticed it just came through on my, on my messaging. So yes, one other thing that is really good to keep up on is going through the mail every day because mail can really pile up. I just cleaned up my desk and I made it all ready for school. That's going to be starting in a couple of weeks. And I was appalled at the amount of mail that had piled up on my desk. So. I got rid of all of it, went through all of it. Almost all of it was junk mail. So if you just take the time, every time you bring the mail in, have a place where you file the bills. I kind of put most of my bills and most everyone else's bills too are online. So that really cuts down a lot of the clutter. But if you do, we do get a few bills, bills throughout the year that aren't, um, we get a tax bill for a piece of land that's attached to ours that we pay taxes on that we have to send out. So I put that in a special place, uh, registration stickers, that come in the mail, um, the registration reminder. I mean, I put that somewhere where we won't forget. Uh, insurance cards sometimes come in. So just file through the mail every day, have a place for bills and then throw away the junk mail. And if you do that, that just, you'll stay on top of it really easily. Just remember that everything has a place and there's a place for everything. My best friend is so good about this. Everything in her house, if you ask her where this is, you know, where is this, where is this, where is this, she'll know exactly where to point pointed out for you. She has everything in baskets, their own little basket, like in the bathroom, everything is organized, you know, band-aids in one spot, tie backs in one spot, bobby pins in another spot, uh, lotions in one spot, pain, pain meds in another spot. So everything is super organized. I'm like that in my head, but it doesn't always, she has older kids. I mean, her youngest is going to be six. So she doesn't have real little kids anymore, but I would be like that all the time. <laughs> but it doesn't necessarily always work out that way. But I try to tell the kids everything has a place and it, there's a place for everything because it drives me nuts when I have to search, like go through and search and spend all this time searching for it. So I've um, gotten to the point where I keep all my thermometers in one spot and they, as soon as I'm done using it, I put it back because there's nothing worse than when you're at, up at 2 a.m. with a child with a fever and you can't find the thermometer. I'm pretty good at gauging just by kissing their forehead, but that's not the best gauge. So I like having that thermometer just to back up what I think they're running. So 
Um, now that it has its own little drawer, I put it up on top of my shelf along with the, um, the homeopathic stuff I use for my kids, the teething stuff, the Arnica, the Advil, like baby Advil, baby Tylenol, it's all up there on top of my shelf. And then it's easy access for those late nights, you know, and you always want to keep it easy to grab for those late nights. So yes, I do that too, Beth. It's kind of, it kind of takes the fun out of getting the mail, but it's kind of neat too, seeing what's coming in every day. She said, um, if you sign up for informed delivery with USPS, you know, it's in the mail each day and you do, they're pretty accurate. And I get an, I get an email every day showing me it, they scan your mail and then, you know, if your packages are coming in, but that's kind of nice too, because you'll know if, you know, if you're gone and you need someone to bring in your packages, you'll know what came that day. So, um, yeah, I get that as well. So there is a difference between being dirty, having a dirty house and then being lived in my house definitely looks lived in. There will be lint on the floor. Sometimes <laughs> there's 10 people that live in a very, very, very close quarters. So it definitely is going to look lived in. Um, I know Abby keeps up with a lot of things, but she's, we're always sweeping. We're always vacuuming, um, sweeping under the couches because we have the hardwood floors. So it definitely looks lived in, but that is fine. It's your house is going to look lived in. It's not going to be a museum. You have a bunch of kids. So, but there is a difference between dirty. Now, when my kids were younger, I would have, and they still talk about this. Um, we pretty much keep it clean throughout the week. So we don't do this much anymore. Our big clean day was Saturday and we would spend almost the entire day cleaning. And that is when we would get the nitty gritty stuff done. The mopping, the windows, the dusting, the fans, the um, even maybe bed sheets. We would do all of that on my Saturdays. My Saturdays tend to be a little bit busier now and we keep up really well during the week. So we don't do that as much anymore, but it is something that my kids talk about. We used to do all the time. Hey, Sarah. Um, but have, let's see. So there is a, um, I already went over that. There is apps. There are apps that you can get fly lady, motivated moms, different things like that. Um, if you have a really hard time, I am not really a checklist type of person. So the motivated moms is really neat idea. And I did do it for a while, but I find that I keep better running lists in my head. And I mentally check them off rather than actually checking them off with pen and paper. So sometimes if I go somewhere, I'll have the kids, I'll write out a list for them to do so that they can go through and, you know, check them off as they're doing it. But for me personally, I'm not a big checklist person, but if you are, there are apps that will help that. Enlist the help of your kids when they're small and they will be invaluable as they get older. And that's the point I am too. My older kids are invaluable. My older kids help me out so much. My older kids are the reason that I can do as much as I can do. I would not be able to teach piano. I would not be able to have other ministries such as this one. Probably I would not be able to write when I want to write. I would not be able to read <laughs> the books that I read if I didn't have older kids helping me out with everything around the house. And I mean, everything, uh, the food, the cooking, I have so many girls now when Abby, when she's gone, Chloe loves stepping up and cooking for the whole week. They enjoy it. So, um, they, I have girls in line vying for their chance to start cooking. And I'm sure when Chloe gets older and Chloe's gone, Allie will step up. And then Allie, Lana's going to step up Kelly. I, I mean, I just have this long line of girls that are eager to do it. So but teach them from the time they're little, it's kind of a pain when they're 11, 10, 11, 12, learning how to cook. And you have to, you know, mom, what do I do now? Mom, what do I do now? Mom, what do I do now? You know, you're pretty much doing everything, but the actual mixing, because you have to, you know, but you have to instruct. They're not going to learn just automatically. You have to be there to instruct. And once you instruct, and once you teach them how to do something, then they will take that skill and they will help you, uh, you know, throughout the years. So they will, they will help you and it will be invaluable. It's, it's invaluable to me now with all my kids help. So, um, kids pick up on their parents cleaning style. So just remember that as you're teaching them, it might seem 
um, you know, this is not, this is boring. This isn't very fun. This is annoying having to stand over them and make sure that they know the correct procedure for cleaning toilets and cleaning showers and mopping and, but they're going to pick up on your style and they're going to, they're going to start making their home a haven once they get married and they have their own home. So just remember that, keep that in mind as you're doing that, you're training up the next generation, break generational things. If you came from a house of a hoarder, where you pretty much just had a path to walk down the middle and you know there's stuff piled up 10 feet on all the sides of the house you know break that um be a minimalist you know make sure that your clutter doesn't pile up and you know constantly get rid of clutter and constantly try to purge your house and constantly try to keep the clutter very keep your walls clear you know one thing that i read somewhere that really made an impact on me when i was younger was that the floor is not, it's not a place to like put things. it's not a table. So um, even if there's things like, I'll try to go through and let's say in my own room, I had a little table underneath, I had a hat box filled with like letters from me and my best friend back when we became pen pals, that's how we became close, we started writing um, a hat box sitting there or a stack of books, you know, the floor is not a resting place. So try to keep everything up off the floor. And then also, if you like a lot less clutter, try to keep just an open wall. You know, you don't have to have something sitting on every single wall or stacked up on every single wall. You don't have to have tables or, you know, cabinets or whatever stacked up on every single wall. So when you free space, it kind of, um, it does have a freeing feeling. It does feel more free and you feel like you can breathe, at least for me. Those of you that know me know I'm constantly getting rid of junk and constantly purging. I have a small house, so we can't really keep a lot. And even as much as I try to keep on it, my basement right now, it is driving me nuts. I went down there. Things tend to pile up in the basement. If there's no room for it upstairs, the kids just take it down the basement and then it starts piling up. And then we have to purge that about once a year. It's amazing. As Americans, we have a lot of stuff. We have a lot of stuff and we have a lot of clutter. And for me, it can get to where it feels suffocating if I even just have a little bit. So I'm always trying to purge out the clutter. So yes, that is another thing. Um, Sarah said, a tip I was given to help was the floor is not storage. Yes, and that's the same basic concept. The floor is not a place to just pile things, um, you know, just set things. So I've tried to keep that in mind as I have, um, went through my house and tried cleaning it. So but yeah, minimize, 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 and try to break those generational things. I, I do feel bad for those who were raised in a home where maybe it was a dirty home or they weren't taught how to clean correctly. And it's really tough for them to break out of that once they get married and have their own kids, but it can be done. I know it can be done. Um, I've seen people that hated it growing up. It, I, I, for me, when my house is clean, I feel like my life is in order when my house is chaos and dirty and it hasn't been clean and there's clutter. I feel like my life is out of control. So that's just something with me. So I like to keep it under control and clean. And, um, yes, that's that I struggle with not allowing all horizontal surfaces to become magnets. Yes. And even if you just make the rule that you're not going to pile stuff, you know, the kitchen table tends, everyone comes in from church, it gets piled, stuff gets piled, but we've got it to where we're all pretty good. Abby's pretty good. Chloe's pretty good about cleaning off the table, putting everything back in its spot. And once again, that goes with everything has a place and there's a place for everything. So just clean it off. Don't let it pile up. And um, that'll help a lot. And then have a basic cleaning schedule, but add on the big jobs once a week. If that's, you know, good for you, things like washing all the sheets, you know, washing the windows, big jobs, like cleaning the fans. We only do that a few times a year. Um, you can enlist little kids to help with spraying down walls. They love spray bottles. So if you just do water and a little bit of essential oil, give them a rag and have them start spraying. It's not going to be perfect, but they're learning to work and the house will smell good because the essential oils. And there they will get a little bit done and then you can kind of come after them and then scrub down the whole wall as they're doing it. So 
my kids have always loved doing that. They love spray bottles and they love wiping down walls. And it's a huge help because one of the things that drives me nuts is when there's grime all over walls and all over door frames. And I just posted a couple of pictures the other day and I noticed one of our walls needed to be washed and it was driving me nuts. <laughs> and I almost edited it out, but I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that because my house isn't perfect. And I'm not trying to give the illusion like it's perfect. I'm leaving the grimy fingerprints on the wall in. So I left it up and I didn't say anything about it. I didn't put a disclaimer. I just posted it and I just let it be because my house isn't perfect. It is lived in. So things like that, um, I do like to clean every so often, but you're going to have smudges on the walls. You're going to have smudges on the windows if you have kids because they're always pressing their nose up against it. And um, yeah, you're going to have that. So the problem or the, the key is just not letting it get away with you, not letting it get away from you. And then it's just, you know, every wall is smeared, it, you know, yeah, you can't even see what the color of the paint, you know, underneath it. So once again, balance. <laughs> and then if you, I found if you keep up with the laundry every day, it won't pile up. And this was really tough for me because when we first got married, I had to go once a week to my mother-in-law's to do laundry. For the first year, I believe we lived in a really tiny duplex and it was kind of a, not the greatest part of town. And I really didn't want to go by myself to the laundromat. So my husband, we only had one vehicle at the time, would drop me off at my mother-in-law's. I would stay there half the day, do all of our laundry at once. And then we would be done with laundry for a week. Well, that system, even after we moved into a house with washer and dryer, I kind of had that same mentality going. So once a week laundry. So I would spend one day a week just doing all the clothes. Well, those of you with big families, the more and more kids that you add on, you know how that's not really feasible anymore. So um, I found that now we just keep up with it daily. And once again, the girls are really good. They just took it upon themselves to start doing the laundry. And so um, they're really good about changing the loads. I think we do about two, two or three loads a day. But just doing that much, we are able to stay on top of it and it doesn't pile up, which is nice. So that was the cleaning section of it. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave it down below. And then the next one is working hard around the house. Okay, so five days a week, I have a pretty, I have a schedule. Five days a week. Um, and the most important things in our household are number one, school. That's always very important. I really strive to do five days a week, no matter what, obviously. There's going to be field trips. There's going to be days. Um, sometimes once a month we do homeschool co-op that Friday, usually not much school gets done, but it's fine because they're still learning stuff because we're doing homeschool co-op. Um, the second thing is music lessons. I do some weeks, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, some weeks, Tuesdays, half a day, Wednesday and Thursday. So some days, two days a week, some days, two and a half week, days a week. What I've decided to do this week is on Mondays, that's going to be my school day. I'm going to focus on that. No appointments, no running out, no groceries, no errands. I'm going to stay home. I'm going to do lesson plans. I'm going to grade this, the tests in school from the week before. They grade their own school as they go, but I'm going to grade tests and record them. Um, do lesson plans for the week. Make sure that they know what they're doing when it comes to math. I'm going to be doing teaching textbooks this year, which is an online math course which is nice because it grades the work for them themselves. So I will not have to be grading that and I'll be able to kind of see how they're progressing if they're understanding it as they go. So I'll kind of keep an eye on that. And then um, the Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, they will be doing school um, pretty much, you know, they do school when I'm teaching. And then after I'm done teaching, just checking their work through the day, seeing what they did, seeing if there's any questions. That's my kind of basic schedule. And then once that's done, usually around three or four, um, not when they're done with school, they get done. It only takes them about four hours to do school, four or five at the most. And then they're done by one or two in the afternoon, but I get done teaching usually around three. And then once that's done around four, they will have time to just chill, relax, do all the fun things. Um, so that's my basic schedule. I would encourage anyone that is homeschooling to get into a sort of schedule so that you have that foundation. You don't want to just be, it doesn't need to be a free for all where everyone's doing their own thing. You don't, you know, this kid is, doesn't want to do math. So he puts it off till the end. And then by then it's been eight hours of 
yelling at him to do a school and he hasn't done it. So you're like, fine, forget it. And then you go two or three days without doing math. It can turn into a chaotic free for all. So you want to have some sort of structure when it comes to homeschooling, especially. Um, and that would be one of the things I would consider working hard around the home. You have a set, you know, you have a schedule that you're following. It's not a free for all. You don't want to be lazy. <clears throat> especially when you're doing homeschooling and just sitting around on your phone all day while the kids are just, the TV's blaring and Coco Melon's going in this room and there's a sermon playing in this room and there's a music playing in this room and this kid is like cursing at his English pace or whatever, yelling at his English pace and this kid is throwing his math pace across the room. You know, you want there to be some sort of semblance of order. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> And then when it comes to working hard, just put away your phone, put your phone on top of the fridge, put your phone in the safe in your room, if that's what you have to do, <laughs> you know, delete apps. That's what I've kind of done this summer to just um, not focus so much on social media this summer. You can delete your Facebook app. You can delete your Instagram app. You can delete all those apps. And then you can access those on the computer, which I have been doing to check, to check Facebook or to check my um, gently less sisters group, I access it on the computer. I go, I have to go sit down, get on the computer and do it that way because it's so easy to just have this phone in your hand and just be mindlessly scrolling forever. You guys know how it is. You know, we all can fall prey to that. So I've just deleted the apps. Now I keep my phone on vibrate only. So it's not really a distraction because it all comes through my watch. So if I have a phone call coming in for my husband, which would be one of the only main reasons that I would even care to know what's going on with my phone, I can see that he's calling me through my, through my watch. Now, sometimes I've had to run around searching for my phone. I can talk to him through my watch too. Um, so sometimes I have had to talk to him through my watch, but I'm running around trying to, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Cause he's calling. Um, but but yeah, put your phone up when you're doing serious things like school. You can, you know, it's, it's better to just have that out once you are in the relaxed mode. You know, once it's after supper, everyone's chilling for an hour or two before bed. It's better to just kind of keep it up throughout the day. So you're not constantly just looking at it and turn notifications off. You know, I don't have any notifications from up on my phone now because the apps are gone. So when your apps are gone, you're not going to get notifications. That's kind of the thing that sucks you into is having those notifications on. We are a very addicted society to our phones. Um, and I think sometimes we're sacrificing personal relationships for phones. And that's, that's a shame. So put your phone up. Have things you want to accomplish before you get on your phone. Back before I had a smartphone, we had gotten internet on our computer. And I remember I would not allow myself to sit down at the computer and get on the internet until I had supper ready and going in the crock pot or planned or something until the whole house was cleaned up, the dishes were cleaned and put away. This was before I had kids, the whole nine months before I had kids. <laughs> so this is before the first year of marriage. You know, I would just, I had a set schedule even for myself then. So I wouldn't just get on the computer and spend hours because I tend to feel guilty. I don't like being lazy and I feel if I'm hours and hours on social media or back then we didn't have social media. It was just Googling stuff. It was just internet stuff. Um, but I always tried to have a time limit as well. Okay. I can have an hour because I've gotten all my chores accomplished and it may seem silly and it may seem juvenile, but honestly, as adults, we need to set boundaries and guidelines for ourselves too in our own personal life. And I think that comes with learning self-control. And then we're also teaching our kids self-control. You know, I'm going to allow myself this since I spent all day cleaning or since I got, you know, this accomplished or whatever it may be. So, but um, plan for meals early in the day. I know for you, I don't know if you guys are the same way. If you don't plan and then your husband gets home at five and he's like, what's for dinner and you haven't planned, it's panic mode. That's when it's like, okay, order pizza or throw a frozen pizza in. So I try to have like a basic run through of meals that I do. I kind of rotate and I'll take out the meat that morning. If I'm going to, you know, I don't know, grill out or something, or I'll stick the meat in the crock pot, a roast. If you stick that in the crock pot early in the morning, it cooks the whole day. And then your husband knows what's for dinner. Cause he can walk in and smell it that night. Right. So 
Um, make use of the crock pot though. I have done this since day one of being married and it has saved me so much fuss and prep work. And you know, a roast is so good. And this is how I make my roast. I throw in my roast and I throw in some broth over it. Sometimes I'll do sliced onion and then I'll sprinkle on a packet of ranch dressing, a packet of brown gravy dressing and a packet of Italian. And yeah, maybe it has GMOs or monosodium glutamate or whatever, but that's what I use. Maybe you can find organic and I cook it all day in some broth and then I put some broth over it and it's so good. It's like the brown gravy just makes this really, really thick, really good sauce. And it's super, um, super easy, super easy to do. And then the whole house smells wonderful near the end about with about three hours, three or four hours left on high, I will throw in the carrots and the potatoes. You can also use, is it turnips in place of potatoes? It's really good. Turnips are, I think that's it. You can use turnips in the place of potatoes if you're doing low carb. It's really good. So throw that in the last few hours and then make up some rolls or biscuits to go with it and a salad. And you've got a really well-balanced meal. So, you know, make use of the crock pot roast with veggies or some kind of meat with veggies, make great meals. A lot of times out of the trim, healthy mama cookbook, one of our favorite go-to recipes is crispy looking chicken. And that you just throw everything on top, all the spices and stuff, and you cook it on a real low heat for like five hours. So we have to have that in by 11 or 12 in the afternoon, but then it just smells so good as it cook, as it's cooking. And then we always do rolls or biscuits and, um, a salad with that, a vegetable with that. And it's not, it's not hard. If you think ahead and you just do, you figure in a meat, a bread, you don't have to do a bread if you're doing low carb, but my husband loves breads with his meat. So meat, a bread, a vegetable, a salad. You've got a really, really good meal. If you do dessert, you could throw some brownies in the oven, you know, and then have brownies and ice cream later. I've done that a lot. So it's not tough to come up with meals. You just have to prepare ahead of time for it. Let your teenage girls cook for the family. It's a great learning experience. Most teenagers, mine are like this. They love cooking. They take a sense of pride and they have a sense of accomplishment in cooking a home meal for the family. My daughter, Chloe, made amazing meal last week. She made steaks and salad and everything to go with it. And I could tell that she felt a huge sense of accomplishment. Cowboy grub is amazing. We make cowboy grub out of the Trim Healthy Mama cookbook a lot. <laughs> and that is a really good meal. You can serve that with cheese, sour cream, uh, tortilla chips, if you're not doing low carb, but it's very well-rounded. It's got meat, it has beans, it has rice, it has tomatoes and seasonings. So it's got a lot of good stuff in it. Cowboy grub is amazing. It's a favorite in our house. Um, and then we just sometimes do breakfast for supper. This is one of those meals, like what are we having for dinner and you haven't prepared? Well, you can throw some bacon in the air fryer. You can do scrambled egg and toast. You can do pancakes and bacon. You can do waffles and bacon, waffles and sausage links. Breakfast for supper is really, really easy to do. That's still better than ordering pizza or something. <laughs> and then um, listen to your body when it comes to exhaustion. When you are pregnant or you're in the postpartum stage, you're gonna be very, very tired. Don't think that you need to be superwoman when it comes to all this stuff. If you are just getting by with keeping a path through the house so that you can walk without injuring yourself or your kids injuring yourself, that might be all you can do. And that's totally fine. It's just a season. So, you know, do what you can, but listen to your body when it comes to exhaustion. So take naps. If you have older ones to watch the younger, if you're pregnant or postpartum, you know, just tell them, say, I am going to take a nap. Please keep an eye on the kids. Um, you know, if you have littler kids, and I know this is easier, easier said than done, oftentimes, I'm not very good at taking my own advice. Oftentimes when I had little kids, I would clean when they were napping. But if I was just having a really, really hard day, I would take a nap when they took a nap and listen to your body when it comes to that. I probably needed to take more naps when I was younger. I had hepatitis C for years. I had gotten it from my mom at birth. It's, it's cured now. I took um, a medicine and it's cured now, 
But when I had, I had that and it was at its peak, my liver enzymes were always elevated. I was always tired. My right side hurt where my liver was because by that time I'd had it, you know, 25, 30 years. And so I was a lot more tired than I am now, even with that. Um, so I probably should have listened to myself a little bit. I probably pushed myself a little bit too hard. Don't be like me, be like older me, not younger me. <laughs> so, um, some days will be sick days. Hey, Jessica, some days will be sick days or down days. And it's okay. If the house gets behind them, don't beat yourself up over it. Especially when you've had a baby, you know, and learn to accept help. Someone asked a question, gentle at sisters group the other day, they said, you know, why is it that when I offer to come over and help with the house or help watch, you know, that people refuse. And I think for most of us, it's pride. <laughs> maybe the house has gotten a little more messy than we would like, and we don't really want anyone seeing it. You know, maybe we're embarrassed. Um, there's been a few times in my life when I have accepted help when I just absolutely could not move off the couch and I did not feel guilty about it. And my, my in-laws had to come over and watch the kids for me. So I, I had the flu. I had a horrible fever. I had the flu. I could not move. And there's been times like that, but try to let go of that pride a little bit if you really need to and have a mother's helper come over, you know, so that you can lay on the couch and she can run after the kids for you, especially if you're sick or you're early pregnant and you're sick that way. So, you know, just don't let, don't, don't feel guilty. You know, um, my husband's always been understanding and thankfully he's not one of these guys that demands a perfect house. I can tell he loves it when the house is clean and it's functional and all that, but he also understood when I was newly pregnant or throwing up or, you know, early postpartum, he understood and he never put demands or, you know, on me. So and it's tough too, if you, if you have someone, if you're married to someone like that, because then it is hard to be joyful <laughs> when you're, when you're cleaning and things, because then it's almost like it brings out a bad attitude. So I feel bad for you if you are in that situation, but I think most husbands are understanding husbands have never been pregnant. They've never brought a baby into this world, so they can't fully comprehend, but I think they do know especially if you are a hardworking woman, they know when you're not feeling it, they know when you just possibly physically can't. So uh, <clears throat> yes, I used teaching textbooks once Allison, like years ago. And, um, I, for whatever reason, didn't use it the last two years, but I think I'm going to go back because I love it that it explains everything, it gives them their lesson, and then it also keeps grades, which I really, really like. And then you can see how many they're getting wrong and, and all that. So, but don't be so busy working around the house that you forget to just cuddle and have fun with your kids too. You want to create a pleasant atmosphere. You don't want to have a house that's just constantly rigid and you can't get your toys out to play with them. And you're constantly yelling at them because they made a mess and you know, you want to chase them around and you want to have fun with them and you want to play with them and make them laugh. And you don't want to, we're not raising little soldiers. We're raising human beings with souls and feelings and emotions and hurts. And we have to remember that you have to remember that you're, you're not raising a soldier you're raising. And people will say, well, you're raising a soldier for Jesus Christ. Well, yes, but I mean, some people literally act like their home is an army base or something. <laughs> And their kids are being held up to inspection and their beds are being, you know, inspected every day and don't have such a rigid house where they are going to want to run screaming from your house as soon as they turn 18. So, and then lastly, I have creating a pleasant atmosphere. So this is all um, just basic stuff leading up to this, the cleaning and all that. But when you want to actually have a pleasant atmosphere too, where it doesn't feel like people are walking on eggshells because if they say something, you might blow up or something. So some of the things I've tried to do throughout the years is take time to greet your husband nicely when he gets home. I know for my husband, he doesn't like walking into a wife being like, rawr, 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 why did you do this before you left? And you know, Johnny did this and this happened. And a lot of times that comes later <laughs> as we're talking and my kids have known too. And the kids, when dad gets home, it does tend to be a little chaotic in our home because everyone likes dad 
and everyone's trying to tell him about their day. My boys are telling him about something that happened at work that only he would understand because they work the same place he used to. And, you know, this person did this and this person did this. And then the babies are da, 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 climbing all over him. And then the girls are telling him about something that they happened in school or, you know, something one of their friends told them when they were playing a game with them or something. And I'm like over here, like, guys, can you all leave so I can talk to him for 10 minutes? <laughs> so sometimes I will tell them, get out so I can talk to your dad for 10 minutes and then you can come in and tell him everything. So, um, so sometimes I've told the kids, I want to talk a bit first before you get to let me and dad have this time. And then too, I think that shows them that you are prioritizing your relationship with their dad. And that helps them feel secure, you know, knowing that mom likes it when dad gets home too. Mom likes to talk to dad too. And, you know, makes them feel secure in your relationship with him. So <clears throat> absolutely, Jessica. Minimalism with your stuff helps keeping home pleasant and life easier, much easier. And then just keeping everything in its right place. So realize your house will be noisy, like when dad comes home and try to embrace the chaos. Sometimes I'm just like, I, it's, it is what it is because it's just, there's basically kids swinging from the rafters and, you know, not literally, but it, it sounds like it. And it's just, it's just, that's my house. I got a lot of kids in a little space, so it's going to be noisy. Um, nothing's more welcoming than food. In fact, I think the most commonly said phrase from my husband is what's for dinner. As soon as he comes walking in and he'll, or he'll come in and he'll say, I'm starving. Uh, yeah. And he likes to eat early. He usually gets home around four at the latest and he wants to eat that. So that's why I try to plan early. And when you plan crock pot early, crock pot meals early too, it's nice because then they're ready by that time. You know, you're not waiting for the food to get done in the oven or whatever. So it's nice having crock pot meals because of that stuff. Um, so nothing is more welcoming than food. That's the way to most men's stomach is food. <laughs> um, something that makes our house nice is we do a lot of candles. I know people have mixed feelings about that, but you can do essential oils as well. We do a lot of candles and we do music like YouTube music, piano music, and it just makes a nice atmosphere. Um, I like my house to smell good. I don't like it when I walk in and I smell like a musty rag, or I smell a dirty diaper, maybe in the trash. I don't like that. I like for the house to smell really nice. And I think most men like their house to smell nice too. Um, oftentimes I did what was called a spice pot. When my kids were younger, I would take a pot of water and I would slice an orange, put it in there, a cinnamon stick. And then I would put in all spice and cinnamon and I would boil it and it would smell, it would make the whole house smell like spices. It was really good. So I've done that before just to make my house smell, smell nice. And then don't bombard him with complaints as soon as he walks in. One thing I found too, is that if I have a legitimate complaint that he needs to hear, whether it comes up to something the kids are doing, whether it comes to something around the house, that's not working right. It's better to just bring it up once and then be done. So let him know about it and then be done. I don't know if your husband's like mine, but he doesn't like when I repeat something over and over and over and over again, it really drives him nuts. So I think it makes more of an impact as wives. If we can just say, listen, I have a concern about this, lay out the concern and then just let it be. Hey, Joyce. <clears throat> so that's what works for ours. Obviously, once again, a disclaimer, because people like to take things that I say and run with it. Not everything that works for me is going to work for you. Every marriage is going to be different. I should just like say this at the beginning of each one. Every marriage is going to be different, but I'm just telling you what has worked with mine. And since most men are pretty much the same, it might work for you. If not, then you do you. And I'm just telling you what's helped in my life. So there's the disclaimer. Um, pick up on cues. You know, sometimes your husband's had a hard day. So maybe that needs to be the day that he just needs to put his feet up and just not talk for a while. Um, my husband is a pastor, so he does a lot of talking. And I think for most men, they have like a talk quota <laughs> and they've kind of, sometimes they use that talk quota at work and then they come home and you're like, 
and they're just all talked out. So it's not anything against you. It's just that they just need some downtime. Even me as an extrovert, when I've talked a lot, I need just some time to even recharge being an extrovert too. I don't, I don't necessarily get totally recharged from being around people all the time, because sometimes I am, maybe I am counseling someone or I am talking to someone about problems and their problems kind of become my problems. And I unintentionally, I think it hurts my heart. So it can be a little draining. So when I, when I have things like that going on in my life, I like to just kind of retreat a little bit, read a book, read my Bible, listen to some music before I'm ready to engage again and talk, 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 talk. So I think men can kind of be that way as well. So as women, as wives, we know our husband's cues and we always like it when he picks up on our cues. So we can do the same for him and pick up on his cues, you know, kind of pick up on what he wants at the moment and what he's not able to handle at the moment and kind of go with that. So, <clears throat> oh, thank you, Beth. You know, um, she said, I love watching you and your daughter and the other lady playing piano on the live streams. Yep. We have three piano players here. Um, sometimes I feel guilty because I feel like our church has been blessed with so much musical talent and I really love it. Um, our music is exploding here and I just love it. And, um, now my daughters are getting old enough to sing and harmonize together. And they picked out a song this past week and worked on it all themselves, picked out the harmony parts all themselves and sang three part harmony song yesterday at church. And oh, it just made me feel so wonderful. <laughs> and so that's just another example of something that if you start when they're young, by the time they get to this age, that stuff's really coming out and it's really becoming a huge blessing in the church and a huge blessing to you as mama. You know, when you start piano lessons, when they're six or seven or violin lessons or singing lessons or whatever it is, you start having them be involved in things. I never thought that my 17 year old would sing up, stand and sing a solo. I never thought she would play a solo in church, but music lessons have really given her that push that she needs and that encouragement. And it's really bolstered her self-confidence and um, really pushed her out of her introverted shell. So that's my little shameless plug for music <laughs> that I wasn't planning on doing, but, <laughs> but yes, and they will be uh, recording that song for the music channel. If you haven't checked, just type in Liberty Baptist music, Liberty Baptist church music channel, and our music channel should pop up with um, really pretty songs in there that we're doing. So stay calm, even if the kids are not, there needs to be one calm person. So you're the calming force in the home. If mama's stressed out and freaking out, so is everyone else. So just remember that. And then some days are just bad. You know, if you have a bad day, you fail, whatever, just apologize and do better the next day. We all have bad days. Um, no one's perfect. We, unfortunately, we are still in this flesh until we receive our change of body. So we're going to fail. Just acknowledge that you failed. Don't just tell your kids when well, you just need to deal with it. Cause the Bible says honor your father and mother. Well, the Bible also says fathers provoke not your children under wrath. So, or under anger or whatever it is. So, um, you know, you have a responsibility, you and your husband have a responsibility to love them and nurture them and bring them up without them feeling like they live in a war zone. You know, if you and your husband are constantly fighting, it's going to, it's going to have a horrible impact on the home. If you and your kids are constantly fighting, it's going to be bad. If, if you're constantly screaming because, you know, they put a, got a crumb of food on the floor, it's going to be a very tense environment. And as soon as they turn 18, they're going to say, see ya. And they're going to go try to find calmer pastures somewhere else. So <clears throat> I've always wanted a home where my kids were sad to leave. And they weren't just like chomping on the bit to get out the door as soon as they turned 18. And now that my son is leaving for college in two weeks, I see that he's sad to go. And that makes me happy. It makes me happy that at 20, he's going to be sad to leave his baby sisters and not see them, you know, for a while. And I hope that I always have a home that he feels like he can come back to, you know, even after he gets married, I don't want to have a tense home. I want to have a happy home and a calm home. Okay, it's not necessarily calm, barely ever, but <laughs> maybe once as the kids get older, 
but I'm glad that I'm seeing he's excited and I'm excited for him, but I'm glad that there's a little part of him too. That's sad. That's sad to leave. It, it shows me that, okay, this is what I wanted. This is what I was trying to accomplish all those years ago, almost 21 years ago when I gave birth to him, this is what I was trying to accomplish. So, um, as moms, we want our kids to grow and spread their wings and fly and leave the nest once they need to. But we also want them to be a little sad because they enjoyed their childhood and they, they liked their mom and they liked their dad and they liked the home that they live in. So that's, that's the goal for all my kids. I hope I can accomplish that. You know, I'm not perfect and don't even take this like I'm saying I am because I'm not, none of us are, but we all have goals in mind for our family. And that's been one of mine. So thank you, Beth. Yes, that song is one of our favorites. It's called um, For His, For My Good and For His Glory. And the words are amazing. And I think all of us can relate in some way to that song. The first time my husband heard it, he's actually not a crier, but the first time he heard it, the testimony was given by a family who lost their oldest son at 18 or 19 to a heart attack. He had a heart defect and they didn't know it. And he died and they sang that song and my husband cried through it just imagining losing our son, you know, to a heart, to a heart defect, and then just getting up there and giving God the glory and the honor and the praise. It's pretty awesome testimony. One that I think all of us want to have Proverbs 14, one says every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. So there's a lot of power. There's a lot of responsibility on us as women. We do set the tone in the home. And we do have the, um, the responsibility of building our house or plucking it down with our hands or our mouth. <laughs> our mouth can also do the, the plucking the down. So, um, you know, I love Proverbs 31. I have a few verses here from Proverbs 31. I think that just go along with working hard. You know, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need to spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. There's that hard work. She's like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. So she looks for all the deals and tries to get good deals, even on food. She rises also while it is yet night. I am not Proverbs 31 in this aspect yet. Maybe I need to work at that. And giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maiden. So she's considering what she's going to make and feed them. She considereth the field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand, she planted the vineyard. For me, this is where my music lessons come in. This is my vineyard. This is my work that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to instill another generation of pianists. And so this is my work. I'm considering my students. I'm training them. I'm trying to teach them and impart the gift of music to them. That's the way that I do that. Uh, she girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. So she watches out for her body too, which we'll cover in the next, you know, just watching out for yourself, taking care of your health. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. So she's even up late doing stuff for her household. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. This is where she has compassion on other people and she has a ministry to other people, which is what I consider gently led sisters. I consider a ministry to all of you. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. So she watches out for what her, her family wears too. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. So she watches out for what she wears too. She doesn't dress in flower sacks. She actually takes time to dress nice and look presentable. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. So not only is she a great woman, but her husband is a great man as well. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and dwell, delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. This is one of my favorite verses in Proverbs 31. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. It's not always easy to be kind. It's not easy to be kind to people who are attacking us verbally who are mocking us, making fun of us. It's not, it's not easy to be kind. It's not easy to be kind to grouchy kids or a screaming kid at two in the morning or a grouchy husband. It's not always easy to be kind, but the Proverbs 31 managed it. 
Proverbs 31 woman managed it. And this is one of my life verses. I'm trying to learn this in every area, in every area of my life. She opened, openeth her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Put your phone up. <laughs> her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. What does your husband have to say about you? Does he say you're hardworking? You know, what about your kids? They know the true you, <laughs> you know, so those are, that's important. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. So obviously Proverbs 31 woman is kind of like this, you know, standard that we all think we can never live up to. But I do think there are principles that we can see that we can apply to our own life even now. So I like to just read that every so often and look, okay, I need to work on this. I need to work on this. I could be a little more kind here. Um, I could work a little bit harder here. I could do this. You know, I could get some better deals here so that my, the heart of my husband does safely trust in me. You know, I need to stay in budget better here. I need to not go over the budget here. There's all always stuff that we can work on. So I hope that was a help. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Something that you've helped, that you've found to help, sorry, something that you've found to help in your own life when it comes to schedules, when it comes to cleaning. Um, also, I meant to throw this out there. I am going to be going gluten-free, trying to help with these uh, nodules on my neck that are feel like they're getting bigger. So if you have any favorite gluten-free recipes or different meals that you like that are gluten-free, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. A lot of the stuff I was mentioning that we already make is like roast, you know, roast with the vegetables, a salad. It's going to be pretty easy for me to eat gluten-free as far as main meals in my home. It's just the, um, the lunch and breakfast where I'm probably going to struggle. So, and snacks. <laughs> so I'm trying to cut out dairy and gluten as I start out in this. So if you have any good suggestions, go ahead and leave them down below. I read all the comments. I try to respond. If you have questions, I try to respond. So I definitely see all the comments that, uh, come in. So and that sounds awesome. Joyce, she said, I love my planner and the clean mama method. That's a newer one. You can tell I'm like older than you because the ones I'm recommending are like all ones from my era, like fly lady, motivated moms. And there's a new clean mama is on Instagram, I believe. And, um, yes. Thank you, Sarah. Go ahead. Yes. Sarah's the one that told me about clean mama. That's a new Instagram one. And, uh, a lot of ladies like her stuff. So check her out as well. But part two will be next week and we'll talk about taking care of yourself. Um, having time for hobbies, different things like that. So that sounds good, Ronnie. I actually um, have been in place of noodles. I've been eating spaghetti squash and my daughter grew some in her garden this year and they're really good. So I've been doing spaghetti squash to cut out the carbs with the noodles. So, and I really like it, but yes, exactly, Beth. Yes, I know that too, to check for that. So I'll probably have to just do my, um, my own seasonings for the roast. <clears throat> but anyways, ladies, we will see you next week. I hope you all have a great week and we will see you later.